Good evening children hope you are fine by god's grace today i am going to discuss about the neonatal jaundice so this neonatal jaundice is coming under the high risk newborn of our unit 5 so there are many conditions that are coming under high risk newborn uh, today i am going to discuss about the first condition under high risk newborn that is neonatal jaundice so neonatal jaundice is a common manifestation among newborns clinically detectable with a serum bilirubin level of greater than 5 mg per dl if the serum bilirubin level is greater than 5 mg per dl we are considering it as uh, jaundice so there are two types of neonatal jaundice that is physiological neonatal jaundice and pathological neonatal jaundice in physiological jaundice this physiological jaundice can be seen in term as well as plants then pathological jaundice we can see in, in uh, if the in bilirubin level is increased or there is a reduced clearance of bilirubin that means uh, reduced excretion of bilirubin uh, bilirubin from the body because of any pathological conditions then characteristics of uh, each jaundice that means we are discussing we are going to discuss about the characteristic of physiological jaundice as well as pathological jaundice first is physiological jaundice and physiological jaundice the onset is from 24 to 72 hours of age 24 to 72 hours and it will become peak at 4 to 5 days in pre uh, term infants and 7th day in preterm infants so the peak level of the bilirubin will be coming by 4 to 5 days in a term infant and 7th day in a preterm infant and it disappears by 7 to 10 days that means um, it is because of the uh, change in the extra uterine environment of a newborn that is because of the physiological um um when that means because of the mal adjustment in the extra uterine life by the newborn and it will be disappear by its own by 7 to 10 days and it is clinically undetectable after 2 weeks or after 14 days so it rarely exceed 15 mg per dl so uh, the treatment is needed if, uh, if uh, the bilirubin level is exceeding more than 15 mg per dl so here in physiological jaundice no treatment is needed the next is pathological jaundice pathological jaundice uh, it is the onset is from less than 24 hours of age that means most probably the pathological jaundice can be uh, seen at the time of birth itself and it will be pers- it, uh, it will be persistent more than 14 days that means i have already told you that the physiological jaundice will be disappearing within 14 days but the pathological jaundice uh, will be persisting after 14 days of life then it will uh, the bilirubin level will be most probably it will be greater than 15 mg per dl and the rate of increase of bilirubin will be 5 mg per dl per day okay that means in pathological jaundice the rate of uh, bilirubin that means the bilirubin level will be exceeding uh, rapidly that means at a rate of 5 mg per dl per day and the stool it is characterized by the uh, clay colored stool as well as uh, or white colored stool and the urine will be darkish yellow stain that means the if the yellow stain is um, the yellow stain is much difficult to remove from the clothes the etiology rh or abo incompatibility uh, abo incompatibility i have already discussed this rh incompatibility and abo incompatibility in the preterm baby then intrauterine infections then g6pd deficiency g6pd means glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase which is an enzyme that is present in our body but in some newborn there will be congenital deficiency of g6pd and in such infants the g6pd the function of the g6pd is to maintain the um, what what uh, maintain the rbc level that means uh, to the uh, it will increase the g6pd deficiency because of the deficiency of g6pd there will be increased rbc breakdown in response to certain medications that means uh, main function of the g6pd is to maintain the um, normal lifespan of the normal lifespan of the rbc but in g6pd deficiency there will be increased breakdown of rbc then hyperbilirubinemia so um, i have told that in g6pd deficiency there will be increased rbc breakdown so if there is increased rbc breakdown the hemoglobin will be breakdown into heme and globin and there will be um, the, the from the heme, from the hemoglobin because of the breakdown of the hemoglobin the level of the bilirubin in the blood will be increased and there will be uh, difficulty to excrete all these bilirubin from the body then hyperbilirubinemia then birth asphyxia cephal hematoma we have already discussed in the uh, characteristic of a newborn then hypothermia 
hypoglycemia, septicemia, toxoplasmosis and acidosis. These all are the characteristics, these all are the etiological factors of the neonatal jaundice. Then next we are moving on to the pathophysiology. So before going on to the pathophysiology, we have to understand about the normal excretion, normal excretion of the bilirubin from the body. So uh, in a normal newborn, uh, the RBC, because of the RBC restriction, there will be a release of bilirubin. So this bilirubin is circulated in the blood and the hemoglobin, uh, this bilirubin, uh, the hemoglobin is split into heme and globin. So this heme is converted to unconjugated bilirubin. So as a result of RBC destruction, there will be, there will be splitting of the hemoglobin and the hemoglobin will be split into two parts, heme and globin. And this heme part, heme part that is the iron part is converted to unconjugated bilirubin. This unconjugated bilirubin is otherwise known as insoluble bilirubin. So this insoluble or unconjugated bilirubin is, uh, it will be, uh, uh, it will be, it will be converted to conjugated bilirubin or soluble bilirubin in the presence of enzyme glucuronyl transferase. Okay. In the presence of enzyme glucuronyl transferase, this unconjugated bilirubin or uh, insoluble bilirubin is converted to conjugated bilirubin or soluble bilirubin. This is the, uh, this fun functions, these processes are happening in the liver. And this conjugated or soluble bilirubin is excreted into the bile and it will be, it will be excreted out of the body through urine and stool. Okay, so this is a normal process that is happening in the uh, body. So the normal bilirubin level is maintained by the liver and the extra excess bilirubin is excreted through urine and stool. So normally I will tell you once again, normally because of the RBC destruction, the hemoglobin will be splitting into heme and globin. So the heme part or the iron part of the uh, hemoglobin will be converted to unconjugated bilirubin and it will be uh, secreted inside the liver. So inside the liver, uh, the process of conversion of this unconjugated bilirubin or insoluble bilirubin to conjugated bilirubin or soluble bilirubin. So in the liver, this unconjugated or insoluble bilirubin is converted to conjugated or soluble bilirubin with the help of an enzyme called glucuronyl transferase. So this conjugated bilirubin then will, it will be excreted through bile and it will be excreted out of the body through urine or stool. This is a normal process that is happening in the body. But in uh, a newborn with higher concentration of circulating erythrocytes or shorter life of uh, RBC, I have already told you about the etiological factors. So because of any etiological factors, the uh, circulating erythrocytes, so erythrocy circulating erythrocyte or a shorter life of RBC, that means there will be increased destruction of the RBC, uh, there will be increased bilirubin production. So there will be, pro the heme, heme will be, because of the increased destruction of the RBC, the heme will be converted to uh, bilirubin and the level of bilirubin will be much high in the body. So the liver is unable to uh, conjugate or unable to convert the inconjugated bilirubin to conjugated bilirubin. Okay, is it clear to you? Is it clear to you? So, the unconjugated bilirubin, the level of the unconjugated bilirubin in the body will be getting increased because of any etiological factors, uh, and there will be the ability of the liver will be decreased to convert this higher amount of uh, unconjugated bilirubin to conjugated bilirubin. As a result, the unconjugated bilirubin will be accumulated in the liver and this will cause hyperbilirubinemia or neonatal jaundice. Is it clear to you? So in neonatal jaundice, because of an etiological factors, the concentration of the destruction of RBC will be much high as a result. Okay, there will be uh, destruction, higher destruction of RBC or shorter life of R, shorter lifespan of RBC. There will be increased level of unconjugated or insoluble bilirubin in the blood and it will be um, accumulated in the liver and the liver is unable to con convert this higher concentration of unconjugated or insoluble bilirubin to conjugated or soluble bilirubin and this will result in the accumulation of bilirubin in the liver itself and this will result in hyperbilirubinemia and neonatal jaundice. Then diagnostic evaluation. Diagnostic evaluation first is history. We have to collect the history regarding the newborn, uh, that means regarding the birth of the newborn, regarding any clinical manifestations, then clinical situation, then mode of delivery of the mother, 
then whether there was any blood transfusion to the mother during the pregnancy then uh, whether there was any uh, usage of drugs by the mother then features of carnicterus there if uh, check whether there is any feature of carnicterus carnicterus means hepatic encephalopathy that means destruction of the uh, brain cells okay as a result of this uh, as a result of this hyperbilirubinemia then delay in the passage of meconium so carnicterus have you got what is carnicterus 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 is an hepatic encephalopathy it is one of the complication of hyperbilirubinemia and it is a destruction of the brain cells then physic in physical examination we can we have to assess the color of the baby in the daylight then color of nails sclera mucous membrane skin including palms and soles then blanching of skin what is blanching of skin blanching of skin means whitish skin appearance if you are pinching a portion of the skin and if you are removing it there will not be the, the color of the skin will be white in color uh, which indicate the uh, which uh, which shows that there will be there is decreased circulation of blood to that particular area okay uh, so the, it is not because of the decreased circulation of the blood but it is because of the uh, higher level of bilirubin in the blood so that is that is whitish skin appearance it is blanching of skin then lab investigation in lab investigation we can do abo and rh blood grouping of mother and the baby then hemoglobin level cbc then pcv blood culture serum albumin serum bilirubin okay then urine for reducing substances then peripheral smears coombs test liver function test g6pd enzyme studies these all other lab investigations we are con we are conducting to detect the hyperbilirubinemia or neonatal jaundice then management the first and foremost management in the uh, neonatal jaundice is phototherapy we will discuss it uh, in detail later then exchange blood transfusion then pharmacotherapy first is phototherapy so phototherapy i am just mentioning phototherapy here here the this phototherapy helps to lower the unconjugated unconjugated bilirubin to conjugated bilirubin and secrete it through urine or stool so the nurse's role in phototherapy the nurse's role is keep the baby at 45 cm from the bulb that is the distance will be distance between the uh, phototherapy source of uh, light of phototherapy unit and the baby will be about 45 to 60 up to 60 cm 45 to 60 cm then watch for dehydration and overheating because of phototherapy there is a chance of dehydration and overheating uh, to the baby then 10 to 12 ml per kg increase in fluid intake so fluid intake should be increased daily we have to increase the fluid intake at a level of 10 to ml 10 to 12 ml per kg then baby should be turned in 2 hours to facilitate the um, uh, exposure of light to the body surface we have to turn the baby every 2 hours if the if the baby is uh, staying in supine position for 2 hours you have to keep the keep the baby in prone position for 2 hours afterwards so baby is replaced naked shielding uh, the eyes and gonads that means we have to shield the eyes and gonads of the baby if the uh, we are keeping the gonads of the uh, especially in the male baby because uh, because of uh, because of the side effect of the phototherapy there is a chance of infertility in the male babies and also there will be um, there is a chance of uh, destruction of the retina also because of the uh, effect of phototherapy light source so we have to keep the uh, eyes shielded as well as we have to uh, keep a um, nappy to the baby pro to protect the gonads then ensure adequate breastfeeding so that the baby passes urine 6 to 8 times per day even if the baby is in the uh, phototherapy unit you have to uh, give um, you have to facilitate adequate breastfeeding to the baby uh, with the help of the mother urine uh, and to pass the urine 6 to 8 times per day because or the this hyperbilirubinemia can be decreased only through the passage of uh, by facilitating the passage of urine then check the temperature for every 2 hours then daily uh, record the weight of the baby and check the serum bilirubin as as per the protocols then side effect the immediate side effects are loose greenish stool this, uh, this child will pass loose greenish stool then dehydration fever hypocalcemia skin rashes then bronzing of the skin or bronze baby syndrome bronze baby syndrome means darkish brown color of the uh, skin mucous membrane and then all over the body the because of the uh, it is because of the um, hyperpigmentation of the skin 
as a result of the uh, damage to the hepatocytes or liver cells because of the damage to the hepatocytes or liver cells there will be hyperpigmentation of the skin in dark brown color so it is known as bronze baby syndrome then delayed complication is retinal damage so to avoid retinal damage we are providing eye shields then anemia and hemolysis then delayed puberty or infertility if you are if you are not protecting the gonads properly then in exchange transfusion we are doing exchange blood transfusion to ex, uh, to remove the excess bilirubin and other harmful and toxic substances from the body so this exchange transfusion can be facilitated through the uh, by keeping the umbilical cord intact i have already told you that in uh, preterm infants or low birth weight infants we are keeping the um, uh, umbilical cord intact to facilitate exchange blood transfusion so this exchange blood transfusion is much uh, helpful in the case of Uh, hyperbilirubinemia to remove the excess of bilirubin as well as the harmful toxic substances from the body and this excellent trans blood transfusion is facilitated with the help of umbilical artery and umbilical veins the nurses told in exchange blood transfusion we have to keep strict aseptic techniques the infant should be restrained properly then cardiac monitoring should be performed and placement of a catheter in the umbilical vein hmm? the umbilical vein should be kept intact then if acd acd means anticoagulant citrate dextrose anticoagulant citrate dextrose blood that means the blood is combined with an anticoagulant factor called citrate dextrose and it is used 1 to 2 ml of 10 percentage calcium gluconate is given for every 100 ml of blood exchange that is along with this acd blood we have to provide 1 to 2 ml of 10 percentage calcium gluconate every for every 100 ml of for every 100 ml of blood we have to give 1 to 2 ml of 10 percentage calcium gluconate only if the blood providing is acd 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 blood means anticoagulant citrate dextrose we are uh, mixing the blood with an, an anticoagulant factor called citrate dextrose then blood should be priorly cross matched and warmed and tested for hiv hbcg and vdrl vdrl test we are doing in the case of syphilis then complications are uh, cardiac complications like arrhythmia cardiac arrest circulatory overload then electrolyte complication like hyperkalemia hypocalcemia acidosis then infections bleeding then vascular embolism vascular thrombosis vasospasm then pharmacotherapy the medicines commonly used as are phenobarbital metallopropyrin agar agar charcoal iv albumin infusion so the main nursing diagnosis are hypothermia related to the use of phototherapy then risk of fluid volume deficit related to phototherapy then interrupted family process related to situational crisis prolonged hospitalization of the infant then risk of injury related to phototherapy so these all are the these all are about neonatal jaundice hope you all understood the class very well please go through the uh, notes and make sure you are getting understand the topic thank you